So if you're a Bernie supporter, you know that the tagline of vote blue no matter who is one of those lines which is held over your head that you have to vote for whoever it is, whoever the Democratic nominee is, no matter what, because we've got to stop Donald Trump. Well, for the first time, it was actually held over a Biden supporter's head by the name of Lindy Lee, and she doesn't agree. Let's take a look, then we're going to talk about it. I don't want a candidate or a president who's being supported in the past by the NRA. It's, it's just unconscionable that Americans walking down the street today cannot be, cannot... You didn't, just, just a very quick clarification, yes, you didn't absolutely. feel that way in 2016? My vote for Bernie was not, a, as I mentioned, wasn't a vote for Bernie, it was a vote against the establishment. And the 27, at that but point... why was, are you now with the establishment? I don't consider myself... Oh, Joe, you don't consider I'm, Joe I'm, Biden to be establishment? I'm the granddaughter of illiterate rice farmers. Not you personally, you don't consider Joe Biden the candidate you support to be establishment? There is no establishment. I think this is almost like a myth. You know, if there were truly an establishment, Bernie Sanders wouldn't have been able to get as far as he did. Okay, but you just said you were against the establishment in 2016. Now you're saying against there isn't Hillary an establishment. Clinton. Indy, you said in an interview last month, uh, because you because of the experiences you've had online, in particular uh, with some Bernie supporters, you say you said that he, if he were to become the Democratic nominee, uh, you said you would not vote for Absolutely him. Absolutely not. So that means you would be what sitting on voting Trump, sitting at home. I'm going to vote blue all the way down, except for president. So you're okay with a second Trump term? I'm absolutely not okay with it, but I'm also almost probably equally terrified and traumatized by the prospect of a Sanders presidency right now. So, it's, but it, to the He's point where you would be, be okay with a Trump second term? I'm not okay so, with it. Well, by definition, you I'm would be. I'm fighting if you didn't. like hell to make sure that Biden is a nominee. I, so I accept that. I'm asking a hypothetical, him. which I will also ask Linda. If it is Bernie Sanders a nominee, you will not vote for him, no, even I'm if it means a Trump to. second term. Okay, Linda, are you a Bernie or bust, as some people on the left say? Is it Bernie Sanders or no one else for you? So this is a, a, the translation of what I got from what Lindy just said, is that she doesn't care that Donald Trump will be able to appoint Supreme Court justices over his next four years and literally take us back maybe not 50 true. to 100 years. Um, so that's what you're saying, Thanks because you're saying that you're But what is your view, Linda? President. Linda, what is your view? Are you Bernie or bust, as the saying goes? I'm, I've never been Bernie or bust. I'm not going to lie to you. I might have been. I might have drew the line at Michael Bloomberg, but I know uh, this. What's more important? It's not about my little feelings. Um, it's not about being selfish and self-righteous. It's about protecting our communities and protecting generations to come. And I, ho I, I would it's hope not that about someone that like at Lindy all. would be would be part of that movement. But I guess she's not. But just to be clear, you would vote for a Joe Biden if he's the candidate come November. It would. It would but be very hard for, for me, Mehdi, but I would do the right thing. Way. But I would do, but I would do the right thing because that is the right thing to do. This clip really does just go to show you how the whole unity thing, the whole vote blue no matter who thing, was just a lie concocted by the establishment for them to try to control us. And AOC had a really great tweet about this. She said, "If I, I am constantly asked if I would support the Democratic nominee, could you imagine if I said that I wouldn't?" Yet the Biden camp is out here on TV threatening to help Donald Trump if they if uh, if they don't get exactly what they want. This is profoundly irresponsible on all ends. Our country is not a game get it together. This is a really great tweet. I mean, guys, just think for a moment. Could you imagine if a Bernie Sanders surrogate, if a Bernie Sanders like campaign worker, and like she's pretty up there in terms of the campaign. Could you imagine if someone came out there from Bernie Sanders and was like, no, I'm not going to support Joe Biden if he wins. Guys, the media would have a field day. They would personally, like, they would go after Bernie Sanders in the next interview, the next anything. Of course, though, I suppose there isn't a clear uh, correlate because Joe Biden doesn't do any interviews because he's hiding from the media. <laughs> but regardless, they'd be hitting Bernie Sanders like, oh my gosh, can you believe that your supporter said this? Do you now denounce this? Are you going to fire this person? Like, it would be completely crazy. They'd have a complete field day with it. They'd be like, aha, right? Because this whole thing, why is this concocted? It's concocted to make Bernie Sanders look extreme. It's concocted to make Bernie Sanders look divisive, which by the way is why I think AO not just AOC, but Bernie Sanders should tweet this out and be like, Joe Biden, I demand that you denounce this person or that you are clarify whether or not you're going to support the eventual nominee, blah, blah, blah. What, why? What does that do? Because on the off chance that Joe Biden does respond to it, it means that the media has another narrative. The media then has to go through and have another cycle where they cover the fact that uh, Joe Biden is looking divisive, right? Because the narrative which the media tries to hit on Bernie Sanders is that, oh, he's divisive. His supporters are divisive. So you try to, you know, sort of turn that around. I think that that would be a really good move. Now, I do also just want to show you this photo here. This is of her when she was supporting Bernie Sanders last time around, saying that she is feeling the burn. It doesn't really sound, because, I mean, what she, what does she say? She, oh, I wasn't really supporting Bernie Sanders last time around. I was just against the establishment. I don't know here. She says that she's really feeling the burn. Uh, but, of course, though, that was before she went on the Joe Biden 
payroll. Now, I will say, um, you know, one of the remarks that she had there was that, as I was saying, she was, uh, uh, what was it? She was saying that she was voting against Joe, uh, Bernie Sanders because she was against the establishment, but then she also turned around and said that there isn't a such thing as the establishment. I think what she was trying to say was that the concept of the establishment is, you know, sort of murky. Um, guys, that's the case with any kind of, a, uh, with, any, with any ideological concept. Because, I, I, like, I think what she's trying to say is that what constitutes the establishment is an ideological question since different people have a different idea of what the establishment is. That would be a very generous sort of interpretation of what she was saying. I think that's what she was trying to say, but that doesn't mean that there's no use in using the term, right? Just because different people have a different conception of what constitutes the establishment, right? You ask the people on the right who the establishment is, what's in the establishment, they have a different idea. You ask people on the left what constitutes the establishment, they have a different idea. You know, same thing with democratic socialism. Same thing if you ask people what is justice, right? Like like Plato did or in Socrates, right? They all have different ideas of what that is, but that doesn't mean that have you can't have a productive discussion about those terms. You can't have a productive discussion about what constitutes the establishment, which is what Bernie Sanders is doing. So anyway, and and I do also just want to put in one kind of um, correlate in terms of what her story is. So the reason why she now comes out and says that she's super anti-Bernie is because um, basically um, a couple months ago, she had put out kind of like a deceptively edited video of Bernie Sanders, like praising either it was Fidel, Fidel Castro or someone in in Russia. And basically a bunch of Bernie bros came after her and she ended up having to step down from her position in like the Pennsylvania either the Pennsylvania young, young Democrats or the Philadelphia young Democrats or something like that. And, you know, so she's been ever since then tweeting and waxing and lamenting how, <laughs> how, you know, the Bernie bros destroyed her life. Bernie Sanders came after her to, you know, uh, uh tried to savage her or whatever. Um, I mean, I'm not even joking guys go to her Twitter. She's like whining the whole time about how Bernie Sanders is coming after her and the Bernie bros are like trying to destroy her. No, you want to know what happened, Lindsay? Your privilege got checked. That's what happened. Your privilege got checked. You don't get to put out deceptively edited videos of people and then expect no criticism. That's what happens when you put out deceptively edited videos. I mean, this person, she she really is very privileged. She's one of those people who like went to Princeton, was like class president or something like that. She's spoken at the United Nations. She's just very, very privileged. And I think that, you know, getting criticized for the first time for doing something that you shouldn't do, putting out deceptively edited videos, that was just too much for her. Her bubble bursted. And so now she's saying that she won't ever support Bernie Sanders, that Bernie bros are completely toxic, blah, 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 blah. So I'd say it's like 80% uh, or maybe I'll be generous. Maybe 75% of it is that she's on the Biden payroll. And then the other part of it is the personal sort of backstory of her having her privilege checked for the first time. So, but anyway, uh, anyway, if you like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.